first and foremost, thank you for joining us this evening. And to those of you on Facebook Live, thank you for watching. Welcome. Bienvenidos. I am Hilda Salinas, Assistant Chief of Staff with the Office of Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez. Many of you may not know that Judge Cortez is the Director of Emergency Management for Hidalgo County. The Office of Emergency Management, or OEM as we like to call it, is responsible for preparing for, responding to, and recovering from disasters. Chief Ricardo Saldana coordinates the Office of Emergency Management. Judge Cortez and our OEM staff work together as a team in four areas. Disaster mitigation, emergency preparedness, disaster response, and recovery. Tonight, we find ourselves focused on emergency preparedness. During a disaster, sustaining ourselves and feeding a family for 72 hours, as is recommended, without power, is a real challenge. It is on that premise and in partnership with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension that Judge Cortez's Cooking School for Emergencies was born. Judge Cortez's goal for this cooking school is to prepare our community to incorporate more whole foods while having to feed our families during an emergency by allowing them multiple recipes and to identify and mitigate the dangers associated with indoor cooking, which may place your family at risk. And finally, to remind our community that we can never be too prepared. Tonight, we extend a heartfelt thank you to the city of McAllen and the McAllen Chamber of Commerce for hosting Judge Cortez's Cooking School for Emergencies. I will leave you in very good hands with your MC for the evening, Assistant Chief Juan Gloria of the McAllen Fire Department. It's all yours, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Juan Gloria, your Assistant Chief with the McAllen Fire Department. Thank you for joining us for the last one-of-a-kind cooking school this season. George Cortez recognizes that each year, hundreds of thousands of lives are dramatically changed by disasters all over the world. There are many kinds of disasters. Some are forecasted, such as hurricanes, but others are completely a surprise, such as the tragic condo collapse in Surfside, Florida. A disaster effects can be long lasting, and the impact is almost always felt in both life and property. If a disaster occurs in our area, your county precinct, emergency management, other governmental entities like the city of McAllen, and disaster relief organizations will try to help you. But you must also help yourself. Local responders may not be able to reach you immediately, or they may need to focus their efforts elsewhere. You should know how to respond to your events and disasters such as hurricanes, extreme cold, flooding, and yes, even terrorism. You should be ready to be self-sufficient for at least three days. Very important. This means providing for your own shelter, first aid, food, water, and also sanitation. Today, we will focus on some of those prep tips, but especially on food. Cooking safety is very, very important. Hidalgo County Emergency Management and the Hidalgo County Farmer's Office are here also to help us with more of those important tips. Before we begin, I wanna cover some basic housekeeping tips. Restroom facilities, if you may have the need to get up, are gonna be out that door down the hallway, a right turn. Again, if you may get up, please be very careful with some of the wiring that is on the floor. We will also be having some door prices, so make sure that you have your tickets available. We even have people on Facebook Live. If you are watching us on Facebook right now, please make sure that you text us your name, your full address to 956-443-3629. That is 
1-800-242-3629. And you may also win one of these prizes. You can claim it here at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. Now, you should each have one of these booklets, and you should also have this evaluation. This little book has a lot of important information like recipes, recipes and some emergency tips. And the evaluation, please don't lose it. We will go back to this evaluation later on during this program. So please, again, don't lose it. Now, to introduce our first chest of the evening, the important part, right? Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez will be our lead chef this evening. He is cooking with Andrea Valdez from the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. Together, they will highlight two of the recipes provided in your recipe book. Judge and Andrea, please go ahead and show us how it's done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judge, for hosting our very last cooking school with emergencies. Um, anything you would like to kick us off with? Well, sure. You know, Hidalgo County is nothing more than a community of 22 other cities for the people who live in the rural area. And we have a responsibility for one another. You know, as I see some of you wearing masks, and I'm sure all of you have been vaccinated. If not, shame on you, go get it. <laughs> Uh, but we have a responsibility to one another, and that's to help one another. And we feel that having the proper information to take care of yourself and others will help us become a better community. And we define a community view, what we do for one another. You show me a community that helps one another, I'll show you a great, a great community. So here, what we want to do, because we know that, that we've had troubles this, this year and a half, we've had our outages, we have the hurricane, the defense of flooding. So there's a lot of things that we need to be prepared for. So we, we thought it would be a good idea to start providing the best information we can to get you as prepared as we can in case of emergency comes. And one of those is because we the lose power is how to cook or how, how to feed ourselves without, without electricity. And as you can tell by looking at me, and I cry very easily, don't, don't agree with me. I need a lot of energy. I need a lot of food. So, yeah. Let's take, you thank you so much, Judge. And thank you, everybody, who um, showed up today in the rain. And thank you, everybody watching on Facebook Live. We're going to make some healthy, quick recipes, show you how you can do this in your home in the case that you are without power. Or, um, or even if you wanted just to make these recipes on a regular day, you can do this. You can do that too. So we're going to get started, Judge. We are going to start with a vegetable stir fry today. Okay. We're going to have a lot of different options. Um, so we have, we've been cooking lately with this chafing dish and some camper burners here. But I'm going to go ahead and start putting you to work. Let's so, can you chop that bell pepper for me? Absolutely. And while you get that going, I'm going to get some onion going in our pan. I got to kind of manage this, make sure uh, the fire marshal doesn't step in early. Small pieces or large pieces? So, I'll, I'll get to show you how to do that. Is the quickest way is after you cut it in half like this, is you can just dig your fingers right in and rip out this whole seed here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and then you've got your half ready to cook them. And then you can go plant this. <laughs> so we've got some some different vegetables here. Do you like vegetables, Judge? Oh uh, yes, I do. Yes, actually. Do you have any favorites? Maybe that we can highlight. Well, I think corn is my favorite. Unfortunately, it has to. Be a lot of sugar, but the cauliflower, I saw that there, the zucchini. I good have, ones, yeah, good I picks. We're going to get those started. They take a little bit. The, the broccoli. Okay, so we're going to get our, so these are our harder vegetables. And you can see I put a little bit of oil in the pan, and I put some onion. I'm going to try to get this fired up and going here. We're going to add that bell pepper here in a minute. But you want, if you have any root vegetables or any of these harder vegetables, you want to get them going first because they're going to take just a little bit longer. We're going to steam them here in this dish. You'll see them earlier, so there it is. And so I have another little trick for you, Judge, is before we add that bell pepper, 
is we need some garlic. We're going to add some flavor to this mm. because we are going light on the salt and pepper in this dish. So we're going to need separation of this. Is we might. Yeah. So you can get this handy grater. And why don't you grate this garlic clove right into the dish there. Right there? Right. And while you do that, I'm going to see if anybody knows what this is. Oh, we've got a real warm group this time, ginger root. So I was really excited to highlight some ginger root today because it is such an easy way to add flavor without the calories. And um, so we're just going to cut off a little nub of it off of this root. We are going to very carefully cut off all the skin, and then Judge is going to grate this ginger into the pan with that garlic, and that is going to add all the flavor that we need. And these will last you, I think they're like a dollar at the grocery store, so they will last you a good while. They're very fragrant, so a little goes a long way with the ginger root. Mm, this smells good. So let's really get some stuff going here. We're going to... We're going to add a little bit of water so that we can get all of our vegetables steaming. Oh, let's check the back of the grater there. Let's see how much we... There it all is. So we're going to get that in our pan. There you go. You know, I learned something the, the last time we did this, and she told me not to put tomatoes in the refrigerator. I always put them in the refrigerator. How do we store the ginger in the... You can, after you cut it, that's a good question. After you cut the ginger root or any of these vegetables, you will have to put them in the refrigerator. Okay. But we talk a lot about food safety during the emergency cooking school because we don't want people opening the refrigerator. I mean, that needs to stay closed. You've only got about four hours, your power goes out for that food to stay good. So that's why preparation is key because any of these vegetables, as long as they're not cut, you can keep them on the counter and then use them as you need. So uh, yeah, we don't we don't want people um, touching the fridge during a power outage. Did you, that was a question we received a lot during the freeze. Is that something that you received too, Judge? Kind of? Yeah, we, you know, and it's also common sense, you know, really open for refrigerator. I mean, you lose, lose a lot of the... Okay, so while we cut some of our other veggies, I'm going to put this top on there so we can get that going and start to steam because everything else won't take that long. How are you with eggplant? Uh, ese más o menos. Well, we're going to experiment today because this recipe is super tailorable. If you look in your recipe book, you've got a whole list of different color veggies to use so you can mix and match to your heart's desire. But... Uh, I'll get this going. If maybe I can get you to dump in some of our regular zucchini and squash. That, let's let's get everything steaming in there, so we can we can really cook tonight. There you go. And then we'll get to work on the second. Okay. Okay. So let's. We put a little bit of water in there, and we've got both of our our little heat sources here on, so let's get that going. All right, Judge, um, why don't you hand me your bell pepper, because we'll put that in, and then we can get to work on that eggplant. Oh. Okay, so eggplant is full of antioxidants. It's our purple vegetable in this. You can also use cabbage, but all the purple vegetables have all the antioxidants in that outer skin. That's very important to prevent our cell damage. So we, all, we want to keep our cells nice and healthy in our bodies. So we're going to use a little bit of eggplant. So why don't you cut that in half? Cut that in half here. Right, so let's cut it long ways. Okay. We're going to test your knife skills there. Now lay that flat side down. Okay. Now let's cut it lengthwise in half again. Lengthwise? Mm -hmm. okay. And then you can chop that in Chop these then this way. The good thing about a stir fry is the sh the smaller that you have your veggies, the faster they cook. So there we go. Hear that sizzling? Let me get this going here. She gave me a clue. The smaller, the smaller, <laughs> the better. The faster they cook. Okay. So like I mentioned, these are really nifty, right? We're out of, we're in an emergency situation. We're out of power. We can't turn on the stove. The kids have already eaten as much uh, 
canned pasta as they possibly can, right? They're full of salt. So we want something fresh. So we, uh, like I said, we purchased this at a restaurant supply store. These you can get at any camping store. I did learn the tip from the fire marshal. But there we go. Our veggies are getting going. Oh, you've got some good eggplant there. Sure, let's put a little bit in. Since, you know, you're experimenting. This really smells good. And it's starting to look pretty good here. Let's see, hopefully we can get enough heat in here without the lump smoke to just steam everything. If you do want to add some flavor, we can do a little bit of some low sodium soy sauce, maybe just once around the pan. Okay. There you go. And let's see, what else do we have here? I'll let you take your pick. A little bit of carrots. Oh, lots of carrots. You want to get either the shredded carrots or you want to grate some fresh carrots in here. The big chunk of carrots is going to take a little while. Your freshly chopped bell pepper. Okay. That's looking pretty. Mm -hmm. And give that a stir there. We might have to do our second recipe and then we'll come back and check. But you can actually eat all of this raw, right? Or not? Or no? Yeah, you can. Yeah, I mean, zucchini is very, I mean, sorry, eggplant is very similar to the zucchini. So if you wanted to chop that up into sticks and eat that with some hummus or some dip, more power to you. I particularly like it, baked. Of course. But, okay, so let's give that a few minutes before we add our greens. I'm going to take some of this from you. And while we do that, um, let's talk about our trail mix that we like to make. How do you, uh, how do you like trail mix? Well, uh, I like it pretty much with everything that you've got there. I, I, like, I like the seeds, I like, uh, I like the almonds, the, um, the raisins, bananas. So this is a favorite of ours. So when you buy bagged trail mix at the store, it comes loaded with salt. If you have any underlying conditions or you're diabetic, that's something you definitely don't want to have issues with during an emergency situation. So we're going to make our own trail mix. This is a fun way to get our kids involved in the kitchen when their devices die, right? Um, and give them a little bit of activity and it's really tailored. So you can grab those multi-grain oats that we have in that bag judge. And we actually have a surprise. We actually found some dried blueberries. That is those right there. Um, those are really light. Okay, well, you go ahead and you make your trail mix. I'll check on our stir fry. You start with this, and again, I'll make it. Oh, yeah, me. you do like those. I've been keeping tabs on what he adds every time. Pumpkin seeds? So, uh, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds, excuse me. The other ones are for green. I'm sorry, you're right. Blueberries. You had those last time. Blueberries. I like them all. Those are dried uh, apricots. Apricots. Like a little bit of sweetness. Oh, I like these here. These are the, the raisins. The raisins. Both raisins. And, the and cranberries. Cran I was going to say cranberries. Also, good, good color, so you know it has an oxygen. Okay, and bananas. You're going to skip out on the chocolate again because you know I eat it on the way home, right? You know, she wants me to pour chocolate. I, I'm sorry. Everybody likes chocolate except me on this thing. <laughs> so I won't eat. I won't eat them there. Okay. But you can take the chocolate. I'll take this one. Okay. okay. Deal. Okay. You all see some good smoke here. Our veggies getting. The bad thing is the last time I took this home, my grandkids were there to make it. It disappeared really quick. Well, you can pour it right here in this bowl and show it to everybody so we can see how pretty it is and how easy it is to make those things. The good thing is that you can just keep them in the pantry and then put it together whenever you want. It's good for road trips. But that way you kind of tailor it to what you like. Really easy and really good with Okay, so our veggies are having, we're going to take a little bit more time, but 
We're going to go ahead and plate some of the softer versions anyway, just to show how nice it is. We do actually have some canned chicken here, so if you want to pour a little bit of that in there. A little bit means not all of it. Right, not all of it. Like okay. those jalapenos you got me with last time. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Let's make sure. That was good. So, we got, in case you needed some protein, you can use some canned chicken. Um, it's good to have in the pantry for an emergency, right? That's what that's what we're we need it for. So we'll add some canned chicken. Get that in there. This will be uh, quite, a quite a lot of people. And yeah. we only used half an eggplant, half a bell pepper, and a little bit of um, some some broccoli and and uh, cauliflower. Right. So while that gets going, why don't you talk to us about? how to stay prepared for our emergency. Given the rains that we've had lately, um, what do we need to do or what would you advise? Well, I'm gonna let you help me, but for sure, for sure one of the things that we, that we all forget, have enough gasoline in your car, okay? Because once once an emergency happens, if you lose electricity, hard to go find, find gasoline for your car. The other essential one, of course, is, is your water. I mean, water is essential, you can't do, you can't do without it. And to me, the, the best time to be prepared, the best time to get an inventory of all your supplies is when you don't need them. So in the book that you that you have, you have all of that information there for you that will help you come up with your inventory, inventory of supplies. Right, and so we recommend, um, like we mentioned earlier, you need to have food for at least three days. And the emergency management crew was gonna to talk to you about um, you know how much to have per person and everything that everything like that in your go bag, so you can have that ready. So what do you think about these veggies? We've got some that have really softened up, some that might need a little bit more time, but we're gonna plate it anyway just to show how pretty it is and all of our different colors. What do you think, Judge? Mm, that looks good. Yeah. Now, everything you've got in there, I like. That, Great. That would be something. Especially I, for you. Oh, look at that. Look at mm -hmm. this steaming. Mm. So we've got our carrots, our zucchini, our squash, even some purple, our canned chicken, which we'll, we'll, we can flip this go a little bit. And then, you know, we eat with our eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to make this a little bit pretty. We're going to add some green onion. How are you, like some radishes maybe? I like radishes. Yeah, I like some nice crunch. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to make it even really pretty with some sesame seeds. And there we go, we've got our veggie stir fry and our cereal mix. Give her a hand. Wow. Can't say any bad things about Texas A&M anymore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, really, it really brought them up on my... Uh... <laughs> no pressure. No <laughs> Thank you. Back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Josh Cortez and Andrea. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can see how quickly and healthy and savory these meals can be. And also, it's important to remember after seeing them go through this process right now, that with patience and preparations, an emergency can be manageable. So it is very important that we pay attention to the tips and we continue to be prepared for any emergency that we may have. We can still have a good time during emergencies and eat well. Well, I just want to remind once again all of our uh, Facebook Live uh, people to text us, text us your name, text us your full address at 956-443-3629. I'll say it again. Please text us at 956-443-3629. And remember that you can claim your prize here at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. And well, Andrea, it's time to get started with our first uh, round of door prices. So please make sure that everybody get your tickets out. And let me see, I'm not even going to look at it. Let's see what we're going to get. And let's go with the first one. We're looking at the last four digits of your ticket. And the first winner is 1855. There it is. We have our first winner right there. So right behind you, sir. All right, round of applause for the first door prize. Okay, okay we, have, we have three more for this round. Let's see what we get. All right, next one is one, eight, four, eight. One, eight, four, eight. 
There it is. Got a winner. This is going really quick. Let's see. Let's make it more tense. Okay, ready? Ready? Eh, no, not that one. Uh, okay, let's get this. All right, now we have one, eight, five, eight. There it is, we have a winner. Okay. And the last prize for this round, Facebook Live, please make sure that you're keeping tabs of your numbers and, and the information here. And the last one is 1863. Right. Who is that? Back then, there it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's, uh, that's it for the first round of board prizes. And so we need to continue moving forward with this program because we have a lot of very important information to continue to provide you here tonight. And so next, we have a presentation by the Office of Emergency Management. Chief Rick Saldana, what should we have in our preparedness kit for any emergency? Thank you, Chief. Uh, allow me to speak to you. Good crowd, good evening. Uh, we're going to be talking about preparedness in a book. It can be in a backpack. You can use your ice chest or several ice chests, or you can use the little storage boxes. And what do we do? We prepare ourselves. We make sure that we have enough supplies for 72 hours. We make sure we also include clothing or hygiene items, toiletry, wipes, uh, any items that you may need. Make sure you include your space within your, your package. Make sure you include facial covering. Remember, we're still not out of the woods. You know, they've been talking lately. The health awareness. What did the judge mention earlier? Those of you all that have gotten that scene, please do so. Very critical. Should you go to a shelter, they're going to require you to have one. Make sure you, you also, if you have to evacuate your home, make sure you take blankets, pillows, your pets. Don't forget your pets. Make sure you have enough food for them the supplies for them, any veterinary supplies that they need, medication. Make sure you have a little a little uh, storage facility for them or a, a uh, kennel to take with you. Make sure you have all that, a leash, a collar with an ID tag on it. Make sure that, that occurs. But there's some critical things that we also need to talk about. Our elderly. We take care of our elderly. Make sure your parents, your grandparents, you take care of them. Make sure that they have the proper items also. What their needs are, all their medication, their Medicare, Medicaid card, or their insurances, okay? Any equipment that they may need, walkers, canes, wheelchairs, if they got an automatic wheelchair, make sure you have a manual wheelchair. Because if we have no power, you can't charge the, the mechanical wheelchair. Make sure you have all of that. Okay. The other thing that we need to also take into consideration is special needs individuals. Okay. Children with autism, elders with autism, okay. our veterans that may have some special needs. Take care of those. Okay. Make sure you take everything that they require. Okay. Anything that, especially the children that, that, that have special needs, something to keep them busy and going at all times. We have to deal with our toddlers. Toddlers, make sure we have diapers, we have their wipes, we have their formula, we have all the needs for them. As I spoke, as I speak, make sure that we have enough clothing for the toddlers, enough clothing for our elders. Okay? If they tend to sometimes uh, get dirty, then we have enough clothing for them. Okay? Have plenty of those wipes. They make the larger ones for adults also. Make sure you have plenty of time, okay? Should you create one of these, make sure you rotate the item within that go bag or go box, just like you check the batteries in your smoke detector every six months, or and or when the time changes. Rotate your food product, your can product. You got your dry, uh, you can open up and eat from there, okay? Do that. 
uh, some hydration items that you can add to your water tank. Have that in place. Make sure you have gloves, duct tape, twine, or some type of steel rope. A little packet with uh, a knife, pliers, a little flashlight. Also, don't forget a container for matches, as it's shown here, or a little big lighter. Okay, to start anything that may have, or place them in a plastic bag, just like we did with our little uh, yummy here that the judge created. Here. Water, a gallon of water per person a day. Make sure you have plenty of water on hand. Batteries, flashlights. Remember, if you create that go pack. The time changes, rotate your batteries, rotate your food, rotate those pots. As Ms. Andrea had mentioned, a lot of these canned foods have a lot of sodium in them. And at times in need, well, this is all we're going to use. But if you can practice the good eating items that Ms. Andrea mentioned, do so. Very critical. Your documents, your critical documents, in one of these plastic insulated bags. You keep all your items in place. Your insurance information, your uh, baptism, your date of birth certificates, all of the critical information that it needs. One other thing is preparedness. Remember, preparedness is year-round. We never know when we're going to get impacted in any shape or manner. Okay? Make sure you review your, your homeowner's insurance policy with your agent at least once a year. Remember, homeowner, homeowner's insurance policy sometimes do not cover flooding. Make sure you need to check with them about that. If you know that you live in an area that is prone to flooding, make sure you try to purchase some uh, flood insurance. If you can't afford the flood insurance, make sure you, you evacuate from your home to go to a safe haven or to a family member's home. Let's take care of our elderly neighbors that don't have any family with them. Take care of them. Bring them in with you. Take them with you. Shelter them for that, that short period of time. A lot of them would love it. It creates, it creates a clear picture. As the judge mentioned also, keep your, your vehicle full of fuel. The other thing that we need to keep on hand is cash. Do you remember when we went through with the streets? No electricity. Cash on hand. And, you, and, some, and through the pandemic, if you paid attention, a lot of these stores were asking for the exact change. Okay. Some of them are still doing it as of today. So we need to keep in mind all of those good things. Okay. Preparedness is a year-round event. You never know when you're going to get hit. What are our most critical times? Between the month of April through June. The changing of the seasons. That's when we usually have a lot of our straight line winds, thunderstorms, heavy rains. It does a lot of damage when you think it's a tornado. But it's usually straight line winds. Storms that come in in the middle of the night. Yes, we get hurricanes. What happens after hurricanes? Tornado. Some of you all may remember Beulah. Beulah, Beulah actually created about 50 tornadoes outside the valley as they passed through. So we need, to, we need to watch for that also. Be very critical. Monitor your weather. Monitor it very closely. It's very important that you monitor your weather because you never know. Look what happened on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, Tuesday afternoon, Mercedes West of got impacted. What happened overnight from Tuesday night into Wednesday? Rain. The west side of the county got impacted seriously. We had to shut down one of the expressways because of the heavy water. As the judge mentioned also in an in a article that he did today, our system worked correctly. But we just had too much water at one time. Our system, our drainage system was correct, but too much water at one time for Mother Nature. They did that. Please prepare year round. Please take care of your elders, your, your the people with special needs. Take care of your, uh, your toddlers. Make sure you have all the proper items that you need for them. Prepare. When you change your time, Rotate your items in your go pack or your go box. Very, very important. 
want to thank you all for participating here tonight. This is one of the goals of Judge, Gar Judge uh, Cortez in the Office of Emergency Management to educate the general public to prepare for themselves. Thank you all very much and have a great evening. Sufalania, thank you very much. Uh, this, this demonstration of the kit is very important because what, one of the things that we need to consider and that we see as first responders ourselves as well is, is uh, an effect of not being prepared with everything Chief Saldana has presented right now would lead to another issue, which is the panic shopping. And no fuel, no water, no wipes, no batteries, no essentials at the stores. And so everything, Chief, you presented right now gives us a very good idea of how simple these items can be, but at the same time, how critical it is. We can emphasize it enough. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Always be prepared and start preparing now is the right time. Don't wait until it's almost time to have an emergency on top of us. You can also go to page number five of your booklet where you can find additional tips, you know, uh, as far as emergencies, and it will provide you with a basic list of supplies that is very important that you can, that you can uh, look into and acquire all those items now. Don't wait until the end. Moving forward with our program, we want to uh, emphasize once again to um, our uh, Facebook Live viewers to please text us your name and your full uh, address to 956-443-3692, correction, 3629, and you can claim your prize here at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. All right, so time for more recipes. Uh, it is my understanding here. I'm getting even hungrier here. So tonight we welcome the mayor of the city of McAllen, Mayor Javier Villalobos. To... It's it. It's his time to be on the on the hot seat. So uh, thank you for accepting the invitation, Mayor and uh, Andrea. Uh, have uh, they have taken the ch uh, the challenge to um, uh, give us another nice, good, savory recipe. And there's one thing that they promised us, that if there is no power, no problem. We can still figure it out. So, you know, we'll give you an opportunity once again. Thank you so much for being here. And let's move forward with our next recipe. Thank you so much, Assistant Chief. And before we get started, I'm going to hand it to... Thank you, Andrea. You know, Mayor, I don't like that apron shot. <laughs> can you take it off, please? I mean, you really, you really need something a lot better. Yeah, I agree, Judge. Yeah. I mean, see. look at mine. See, mine. That's a real thing. There, on behalf of Hidalgo uh, County and our fire department, you now have the Cadillac of Cadillac. <laughs> In case you don't know, it needs to get the perfect room. I think the, the food's going to taste a lot better now. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a couple of patches from uh, here for you. Mayor, don't forget to take any so much. Thank you for being with us. Also, we have the judge. This is so cool. And I would like to send you we have a nice little basket to prepare you also okay. for emergencies. Oh, so we'll get your emergency preparedness started with that too. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judge, and welcome, Mayor, to our uh, cooking oh, school for emergencies. This is what we're going to do today. Right now, we, well, now we have the fancy apron. <laughs> it goes well with. We're going to fancy up some canned items today, so we're going to be fancy. So the judge and I focus on fresh vegetables. We're going to focus on judging up some canned things. So. Um, we are going to make a buffalo chicken salad sandwich, and you're going to help me make a black bean and corn salsa. Excellent. Sounds awesome. Good. Let's do it. Okay, so let's get started on the buffalo chicken salad first. So we are in an emergency, right? We're going to use some canned chicken. So I'm going to go ahead and just drain this, and then you can add it to our bigger mixing bowl there. And so usually sometimes, and we'll be honest, maybe canned chicken doesn't taste the greatest, but that's why we're going to fancy it up here. It's for emergency purposes. Anyway, right, so. right. Like we said, I got it, don't worry. Like we said, um, you know, canned pasta and things like that can only go so far. So do you like things spicy, mild? How are you on the hot sauce range? 
Kind of spicy. Kind of spicy. Okay. Well, well, don't. But it's for the whole family, so we'll make it medium. Okay. I'll let you be in charge of this. That's some regular hot sauce there, like Louisiana Cajun style. That's going to be pretty spicy on that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to boast that. <laughs> we can add some chopped celery. How really tailorable all these recipes, as much as you think. You're making this for your family. So a little bit of crunch. That'll work. Okay, so why don't you mix that together? We've got a little bit of salt and pepper here, just to add a little bit of seasoning. So I'll add that in while you mix. So how are you enjoying your your first time as mayor now? Well, the first two weeks were pretty hectic. Uh, now we're in our third week, and it has been a lot better. And you were telling me today you did an emergency preparedness Facebook post today. Actually, that's true. We just did a post regarding, of course, of course we're in hurricane season. Right. And pretty much kind of telling what we're more about making sure that we have, that we're prepared with some of the items that we talked about. I didn't take care of this, but we are here now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now he's thinking, okay, great that we're prepared, but what's my family going to eat? Right? We don't want any hangry, yeah, hangry no. people in that household. No, we don't, especially the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty first here, right? Okay, so we're going to have a couple of different options here. We had been making this with a nice, healthy, fresh romaine leaf, but we understand sometimes and kids, they want a hamburger okay. bun, right? So we're going to make it two different ways. So why don't you go ahead and pour some of that, and you can just put it here in the recipe leaves. Also, who can have... Who can have some buffalo without any um, ranch dip, right? But we said not to open the fridge. How am I going to get to the ranch? So what we're going to do is we're going to, in the true fancy up fashion, we're going to fancy up some mayonnaise with a little bit. These little packages come in handy, right? You save from the store. So you want to save those. We're going to fancy up a little bit of mayonnaise with some powdered ranch dip to give it some flavor. So we get the full buffalo chicken effect. Okay, so we'll pour a little of this in here. Let's see, and we'll try to mix it here with this very large spoon that I have. Okay, that looks great. Why don't you put some of that on top of our chicken? With the extra fuel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He has the apron. Now he's the expert. So. <laughs> he has a fire department apron. Fire department. <laughs> My PD's going to get jealous. <laughs> uh oh, what y'all going to give him now? And to add some crunch, we're going to put some, some carrots on there and our buffalo chicken salad sandwich. All done there. Ooh, Look at how quick and easy that was from canned chicken. Excellent. Okay, so let's move on to our second one. We've got a black bean and corn salsa. Okay, so we've got some regular canned black beans. Why don't you dump those in here? And of course, the rest was pre-cut. Right. I, yeah, I don't cook onions on stage. That's just a rule. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to see me cry. <laughs> So we've got our low sodium black beans. We've got some regular canned corn. So you can dump that in there too. And we happen to have in our pantry this like Mexican style corn. So we just went ahead and used that. Whatever is in your pantry. Onions. Right? How much onions do you want? For the family, so not too too much. Okay. That'll work. Okay, let me get this out of the way here. A little bit of jalapeno, unless. You want to tailor that? Nice. Let's see. Yeah. The kids are okay with that, I think. Okay. So, well, we can get started on. So, now that we've added that, why don't you cut that bell pepper? I'm going to cut the tomato, and then we will see who finishes first, and we can add it into our, into our salsa here. So, still some fresh veggies that we can use, regular items that we're going to have, but we're going to use them, to, use them to freshen up some of our canned goods. Hey, while we're cutting, maybe you should discuss about generators. 
generators. Oh, that's a that's a good segue into the fire marshal. Next, mm -hmm. we'll talk about generators. But um, yeah, I, I won't say that's my expertise. I'll I'll let him handle that. But you said yes. you put out some information about generators no, today. We sure did. It's very important that people understand. A lot of people don't know how to use them. Um, actually, I'm not very good at it either. But one thing that's very important is to you know that they should never be used inside. Right. It's very, very important. It should be very well ventilated. So I think actually our fire marshal will probably talk about it. Right. So how are you coming on that bell pepper? Because I beat you with a tomato. The tomato is small. <laughs> right. He didn't know he joined the race. So we're going to add a little bit of our of our fresh cilantro here to really common, common items that we like. There we go. I like a lot of cilantro, so I'll put a lot in there. We're going to add a little bit of salt to get all of our flavors going. Okay, so you can't move the bell pepper. Okay, so however much bell pepper you would like. I'm going to squeeze this lemon real quick. And that's the only dressing that we're going to have in this recipe is just a little bit of lime juice. And that's all it needs because it's pretty flavorful anyway. And okay. super colorful. And it has a beautiful color. Right. We like to eat the colors of the rainbow. There you go. Now give that a good mix. And then you didn't know there was going to be a test, but have you ever seen this before? My mom used to have a bigger one. It's not Thank a paddle. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was also wooden. Yikes. But this is actually an avocado gadget. So we oh. are going to use it safely to cut this avocado here. So instead of cutting it in our hands and risking our precious fingers, perfect. So now how to use the avocado gadget is you're gonna run it inside like you kind of would a spoon and we're gonna get those nice slices of avocado there. That's a rather large avocado, so think however you can pull that off. There you go. It goes in there. Sure does. We love avocado and everything. We got our healthy fats, healthy colors. There you go. The first time ever. An avocado gadget. <clears throat> and you can just scrape that in there. There you go. And give that one final mix. And then we've got a very good and healthy setup here without any power with just some canned items from our pantry, our buffalo chicken salad sandwich or wrap, and a black bean and corn salsa. So what do you think, Mayor? Is this going to work for your family at home? I think it looks wonderful. Awesome. There you go. Thank you so much for joining uh -huh. us on this. Thank you. Back to you. Mayor Villalobos, thank you so much. Andrea, thank you so much. Well, Yet again, another delicious meal that we can prepare at home really quickly with just canned items, no power. You know, again, creativity is, is very important, but again, we need to be prepared. So making reference again to our little booklet here, if you go to page 18, you will be there, able to find there a list of, you know, supplies that you can get for, for meals like the one that we just um, uh, witnessed be prepared right now. So thank you once again, Mayor. Thank you once again, Andrea. Delicious meal that you prepare for, for this event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again to move to more door prices. So we're going to move to the second round of door prices. We're going to have uh, an additional four door prices go through right now. So get your numbers ready, and let's see who's going to be your next winner. Facebook Live out there, please make sure that you're keeping caps. And so the next number is 1861. 1861. Okay, we have, we have a winner. Okay, the next one we're looking at 1859. Also, somebody from our audience. Okay, so let's see who's next here. Um, 1766. 1766, and this is going to be for our Facebook Live, I believe, correct? 
And the name, okay, we have a name in the back for the person that registered, and we're talking uh, Mr. Pedro Reina. Mr. Pedro Reina, you are the winner of this particular door prize. So congratulations. You can claim it here at the Chamber of Commerce here in McAllen. All right. And we have this other ticket. Uh, we're looking at numbers 1767. 1767. And we also have a uh, name in the back for a person that registered, which is Carla Alfaro. Carla Alfaro, you are the winner of this uh, door prize. And again, you can claim it here at the McAllen Chamber of Commerce. And with that, we conclude. Yes, please, round of applause. We conclude this uh, second round. We have one more final round of door prices. We have six additional door prices coming up. But now it's time for the Hidalgo County Fire Marshal Omar Garza and Deputy Robert Chavez to be up on stage. And they're going to be giving us uh, information about uh, additional safety tips during emergencies. So, gentlemen, it is all yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. My name is Mel Garza, the Hidalgo County Fire Marshal. Uh, how many of us in the room uh, have smoke detectors at home? Pretty much everyone. Uh, you guys know how to check them? Test your smoke alarm? Yes? Uh, if you don't, there's a little button up at the front of your smoke alarm. Uh, you hold it down for three seconds. And shortly thereafter, you're going to hear a little. So. Before you do any of what was demonstrated today with, with the heat sources and, and the type of cooking that we did, did you make sure that you've got uh, at least one of these installed somewhere near your kitchen uh, so that in case something goes bad, uh, you're able to, to, to get to uh, you know, that fire uh, or that smoke in a hurry? Uh, number one cause of house fires, does anyone know? Unattended cooking. So we start cooking, we start preparing our food, we walk away for whatever reason, maybe the kids start crying, uh, you know, Pomadi comes over to, to talk, uh, and, and we get busy and we forget that, that we left our, uh, our pan on the, on the uh, stove. Uh, so really important to have one of these. Uh, also, uh, very important that if you have a smoke alarm, uh, that at least every 10 years, uh, you replace these. These, go, these will go bad. Uh, so 10 years is the life expectancy of the smoke alarm. Uh, and very importantly, uh, like the chief mentioned earlier, change your batteries. Uh, and, uh, NFPA says at least once a year, uh, but test them. Test them monthly, uh, you know, test them every six months, but, but do that test and make sure that they make that out. Uh, annoying noise to make sure uh, it catches your attention. The other device I'm going to talk about real quick, it's, it's a little different, it's where uh, it's a uh, carbon monoxide detector. Uh, Mayor Villa almost talked about the generators. Uh, we've talked about, uh, into the presentation that Deputy Chavez is going to do, we've talked about some of uh, the gases that these devices put off. Uh, they're not safe. Uh, so we recommend that if you're going to use this type of cooking, uh, that you've got one of these installed uh, also uh, near your kitchen. And this is a carbon monoxide detector. I will test it and you will hear the difference in sound. It's different from that smoke alarm uh, to give you, uh, you know, a, a reference of to what has happened. If you hear this or you hear, hear this, uh, don't hesitate to leave in your home, go outside, uh, either go to a, a neighbor's home or on your cell phone, call 911 uh, and wait outside until the fire department gets here uh, before you go back into that home because you just don't know, especially if it's this, this, this is a bad one, this one will get you. Uh, and so Deputy Chavez will go into more details about uh, safe uh, preparation of cooking during an emergency and the dangers of carbon monoxide uh, while doing this. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Chavez. I'm an investigator with the Hidalgo County Fire Marshal's Office. Today, our agency has been given the opportunity to share some information on the dangers of indoor cooking. 
Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Um, indoor cooking is something that we all do on a regular basis. Now, some of us will be making meals inside of our kitchen anywhere between two to four times a day, depending on you know how big our families are or if we have friends or loved ones over. So there are going to be some dangers associated with that. And especially because now we're in full swing of hurricane season, we're going to be facing some difficult challenges um, because of these natural disasters. Now, one of the main challenges that we'll be experiencing during these natural disasters is the loss of power and electricity. Okay, as we all experienced with the freeze back in February of this year, some of us here went, with power, went without power for several days. Can I get a show of hands from the people inside this audience who went anywhere between one to three days without electricity? Can I get a show of hands for those who went without electricity for anywhere between three to five days? Okay, so there are, that, that's just about everyone in this group. So everyone was affected by that. So what we're going to do is we're gonna shed some light on the dangers of, of these products that they're used inside your house, okay? So one of the first things that I'm going to talk about is ventilation. Ventilation is key when we're going to be cooking indoors. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna open at least one to two windows inside your kitchen area and one to two windows on the opposite side of your home so that we can get a good airflow going through your house so that all of these gases and smoke are expelled from your home without affecting your family members, okay? So once we get ventilation out of the way, we're going to be ready to start cooking with some of these appliances here. Now, before we start to cook, one of the things that you're going to want to have inside your kitchen or at least inside your home is a fire extinguisher. These are very, very important. I can't tell you how many times I've been inside someone's home and it's their kitchen where, where the fire started and it could have been stopped if they would have only had an extinguisher in their home, okay? Uh, these are very, these are very uh, easy to use. It's a very simple acronym that we use. We use a, uh, a pull, which is when we're gonna pull the, the pin, we're going to squeeze the trigger and we're going to do a sweeping motion. So it's, it's very easy, it's called a pass, all right? Um, one way that we can check our extinguishers to see if that they're still good is they have a gauge on the front. Now, if that needle is still within the green marker, that means your extinguisher is still good. So it's still good to use. So like I said, these can be purchased at about any big box store. You can find these at Walmart, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, you can find these items there. Now, once you purchase this item, just don't, you know, get this item and, and put it in your kitchen or in your cabinet or on the ground away from, from the cooking area because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So make sure that you have this mounted anywhere near the stove inside your kitchen, okay? So getting back to cooking inside your home, is how many of you in this audience have a gas or natural or a propane stove? We have one and we have two in the audience, okay. Now I'm assuming everyone else here in the audience has an electric stove, okay. So that means when, it, when those lights went out in that freeze, we had no means of cooking, right? Uh, those who had the gas powered, you know, you guys were still able to, able to cook, but there was a challenge with that, right? The pilot ignition no longer worked. So what you have to do, you have to put a lighter or a match to that stove in order to get it going. Now, turning on the gas can be very, very dangerous. You know, that's because it's not something that we're used to doing, you know, so we have to be very careful. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's one of the main things that we're gonna talk about is of course, being able to cook without using the stove. So here we have a few items displayed that we're going to be using. Now, most of these items are not intended for indoor cooking. So that's why it's very important that we ventilate our home prior to using these items, okay? So before using any of these things that we have on display, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna check them. Now, a simple way to check these gas um, items here is by a solution of soap and water. What you can do is just get a water, just get any type of a spray bottle, put liquid liquid uh, detergent, any kind of a dishwashing detergent, and, and a little bit of water. Mix that up, 
And what you're going to want to do is prior to using these, you're going to spray them down. You're going to spray them in the areas that have regulators or gas lines. So you'll spray down that area with a mixture of soap and water, and you're going to turn that item yeah. on. Now, if that appliance is uh, has any type of air bubble or uh, you see bubbles start to form in, in any of those areas, that's a clear indication that that appliance should be taken out of service, that there is a mechanical function with it. So uh, it can be dangerous. So you definitely want to take that out of service, okay? So like I said, ventilation is key. Checking your equipment is key and making sure you have an extinguisher inside your home. All prior to doing any of these type of uh, cooking exercises that we're gonna do, okay? So the first item that we have is going to be the ready to eat meal MREs. Now, those of you who have served our country in the military know all about the MRE. These are really good. Uh, it, you know, the heat is self-contained in these items and uh, they actually taste pretty good. They have several flavors out there. They even have uh, types are um, for vegetarians, things like that. So there's a wide variety of flavors and uh, different types of food in these. So uh, these are great, one of my favorites. Uh, the next item that we have is an isobutane container with a torch on top. These are used by hikers and campers. You can find these in any box store like uh, Walmart, Academy, places like that. These are very affordable, they're lightweight, and you can fit this entire thing inside your go bag, like Chief Sagami had mentioned earlier. So this is a very, very important item to have. Now, one of the downsides of cooking with butane or propane is that in colder climates, they tend to sputter. Okay, so that you're not, you're not gonna get that, that clean flame. So it's very, very dangerous. So if it is uh, cold weather conditions, make sure that you're gonna switch to something else other than butane or propane, okay? The next item that we have on display is a type of a, a buffet style type container. Uh, these use canned heat. These are one of the safer method, methods of cooking inside your kitchen. Uh, I like it because it's versatile. You're going to have several different uses for using this equipment here. And we'll get to that in just a minute. The next item that we have over here is another butane stove and propane stove. Now these are bigger items in case you have three to four people in your family and you're not just cooking for yourself. Okay, so uh, these are those items there. You can make spaghetti, you can make soups. Uh, they're very, very good. And like I said, you can cook multiple items at one time. All right, so getting back to the isobutane, this is, uh, like I said, very, very uh, dangerous. Like I said, it's in the cold temperatures, and you don't want to use this too much. But now during now the hurricane season, uh, it's something that we, is safe to use, uh, but you have to be very careful because it burns hot and it burns fast, okay? So as you can see there, we do have a good flame going, and we can increase heat or decrease heat. And what we can do with that is we can make any type of soup, we can boil some water, things like that. So very, very important to have, uh, to have one of these on hand. The next item that we have on display is going to be the buffet style type shaking dish. And the reason that this is my favorite is because like I mentioned earlier, it's versatile. You're going to be able to do several things with this. Now it comes with two dishes. It comes with a shallow dish, which, which is where you'll be cooking your meal on. And it comes with a deeper dish, which is where you put your water at to heat that up. Now, what you can do is, is with the deeper dish, you can fill this up with water. You can turn on your, your canned heat, and it'll allow you to heat up that water. Now, if you have several cans of canned heat, you can bring that water to a boil, uh, and it can be used for several purposes. One, you can sanitize metal, medical equipment. Uh, if you have anyone that's uh, you, the diabetic that uses needles or anything like that on a regular basis, or you need to sanitize other type of equipment, you can do that, as long as you get that water to a boil. 
Another thing that you can do with it is you can um, you can sanitize your baby's bottle. If you have an infant, you can put your uh, your bottles in here, and you can bring that to a boil. Make sure that it gets sanitized uh, correctly. Um, the the third thing that you can do with these is once you get that water going, you can boil eggs, uh, things like that. Now another another thing I'm going to go back one second is another thing that you can do with it is you can boil water to use for bathing. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a way to warm up some water so that uh, you can have for a bath, things like that. So like I said, you can uh, use it for cooking or sanitizing, whichever one uh, that you need. So let me go ahead and get this started so that you can see. I know that Andrea demonstrated earlier uh, the use of these items. And they're very simple to turn on and we'll get a good plan going. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll switch out our deep dish with our shallow dish. And we'll let that heat up for a second. So my meals, ladies and gentlemen, may not be as healthy as Andrea's, but I promise you they will be just as tasty. So we'll spray this down with some olive oil because we're all watching our cholesterol intake. So as that heats up, we'll go ahead and cut this bell pepper open. And we'll use this later for one of our fish. So now that we've got our, our uh, buffet style dish heating up here, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll add a, a ground turkey patty. Uh, of course, this is very healthy. Uh, it's, it's not ground beef or anything like that. And you can see it's already gotten hot. We've already got a really good sizzle going. And uh, let's lower the heat before we set up our smoke detectors in this room here. So here we go. So we have our turkey patties. Uh, and Andrea, like Andrea mentioned earlier, uh, we're not going to be able to open up the fridge very often. So we're going to have to pull some of these items out that are going to be perishable. So we'll get out uh, some, of our meat, some of our meats and stuff like that so that we can add to our cooking. Uh, here we have one of my favorites as a child, Spam. Like I said, it's not going to be as healthy, but it will be just as tasty. So we'll put some Spam on there. And one of my other personal favorites is bologna. There is nothing <laughs> like a fried bologna sandwich. Am I not right? This is what we grew up on here. You know, growing up as a kid here in the 956, this is what we ate on a regular basis was Spam and fried bologna. Okay? So what we'll do here is we'll get our isobutane going again. And while this cooks, what we're going to do next is we'll get a good flame going there. And what we can do here is we can fire roast our bell pepper. So what we're going to do here is we'll get this bell pepper cooked. And then what we'll do from here is we can get some of that ground turkey meat and we can stuff this bell pepper. And that makes a great healthy meal and it's really filling too. So uh, if you're watching your weight or if you're just living a healthier lifestyle, this is a perfect meal right here for your family. So it doesn't take too long to cook. So we'll crank up the heat just a little bit and you can start to smell that we're getting a really good fire going. So we'll set that aside there. Now that we've got that nice and toasty, flip over some of our ingredients here. Oh yeah, that's 
going good. So uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you earlier or not. I do work for the fire marshal's office, but before that, I worked as a firefighter. And I can tell you right now, if there are two things that firefighters are good at, and Chief Brody, I can attest to this, is that one, we're good at fighting fire, putting out fires. That, that's our number one thing. But the second thing that we're good at is cooking in the kitchen. That's what we're good at. You know, so it's those two items right there. So, man, now we got, oh, we got a little bit of smoke here. So there we go. We'll lower that heat a little bit. Let that clear out. So some of the next items that we're going to be cooking with are yeah, are going to be the the propane stoves. Now these are used for camping, but like I said, during a natural disaster, we can use these items. Now one of the dangers associated with these things here is of course the release of carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is known to us as the silent or invisible killer. And the reason that it's called that is because one, you cannot see, hear, or smell carbon monoxide, but it is deadly, okay? And uh, Chief Saldana and Fire Marshal Garza can attest that last year we lost two families because of carbon monoxide poisoning. And as a first responder, I can tell you right now that losing two families, it, that's, that's too, too many for us. Okay, so that we please ask that at the end of the se uh, session, please share this info with your friends and families, tell a neighbor. If you're watching on Facebook, share the link because you could save a life by simply sharing this info right here. Okay, so getting back to carbon monoxide, um, can anyone in this room Tell me any of the signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide. No? Okay. You know that? Vomiting. Yes. Vomiting is one of the signs and symptoms. Yes, sir. Dizziness. Dizziness. Very good, sir. So, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning comes in either of two ways. It comes in a low-dose poisoning or a high-dose poisoning. So, if you're suffering from a low-dose poisoning, you're going to suffer from nausea, you'll suffer from headache and dizziness. Now, if it's a major exposure, what you're going to suffer from is vomiting, you'll suffer from um, trouble breathing, you're, not, uh, you're going to have um, confusion, disorientation, a major headache, and which will lead, end up leading to convulsions or even death. So it's very, very important that you know the signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide. So, um, so right here, it's very important that we have one of these mounted in our home, okay? Can anyone here in the audience tell me carbon monoxide detector went off inside their home? Very good, yes. So if your carbon monoxide detector goes off inside your home, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is Am I or any of my family members displaying any of the signs and symptoms that we just went over? If they are, get them out of the house immediately, contact emergency response, and let them know that it's a possible carbon monoxide poisoning. It's very important that you mention that, okay? Now, if it goes off and you're not displaying any of the signs and symptoms that we talked about, what you're gonna wanna do is Ventilate your home immediately, okay? You're gonna to wanna to turn off all of your appliances that use gas, which can be your stove, your dryer, um, it can be uh, a, a room heater, things like that. So make sure you turn off all of those appliances, contact a certified technician to inspect each and every one of those appliances before you turn them back on, okay? So that's very, very important. Uh, so I know that the mayor of McAllen mentioned earlier the use of generators. Generators are a great thing when it comes to a natural disaster because it allows you to use some of these appliances that you have in your home. It'll allow you to either use your refrigerator, it'll allow you to plug in a deep freeze. You know, some of our families, uh, from our family members are special needs. They have, they're on the use of a ventilator things like that. So having a, a generator is important to keep them alive. 
but it can also be very, very dangerous. So one of the things that we're going to want to do is before we turn on the generator, we're going to want to mount that away from our house outside. We're never going to use it indoors. And you're going to want to keep that 20 feet away from your home. Okay? A minimum of 20 feet. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to position that generator away from any doors and windows because if there is an emergency, you want to be able to have a clear path out of your home. The next thing that we're going to want to cover when it comes to generators is wind direction. You're never going to want to set your generator up up wind because what you're going to do is you're going to turn that out and all of the carbon monoxide is going to be pushed right back into your home. So make sure that you keep that generator 20 feet away from your home and downwind away from where the poison can get back into your house. Okay? Very, very important. Um, so with that, um, we also want to discuss the use of propane tanks because we're using generators. Some of us would use propane tanks as well to start cooking. Now, these things are great, but you never want to store them indoors. You want to make sure that they're stored outside of your home and never inside a garage or anything like that, anything that's attached to your home. Another thing that you can do is you can spray them down with soap and water prior to storage. Because let's face it, all of us here that have a propane tank have probably gotten used one or turned it in to get, it, uh, to get it refilled, and we don't know if it's been damaged. So one way to check, simple solution of soap and water to check that before storage, and of course before usage as well, okay? Um, another thing that we want to cover uh, before we end our segment is uh, we've gotten the generators. During the freeze, what were a lot of us doing? They mentioned it earlier, filling up your car with gas, right? Well, what were we doing inside of our cars in that freeze when we had no electricity? We were charging what? Our phones, weren't we? Yeah, a lot of us, that's what a lot of us did. I can't tell you how many people I saw on social media inside their vehicles charging their phones. Okay? And what are they doing? They're turning on their vehicle and they have their vehicles parked inside their garage. What's going to happen? Carbon monoxide poisoning is going to happen. So please, if you use your vehicle to charge any devices, make sure that you open up your garage door or that your vehicle is parked away from your home and of course, downwind, okay? Now, do you guys have any questions for us prior or before uh, we end our segment today? No questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. Where can you purchase the MREs? Okay, MREs can be purchased at well, any type of military supply type store, which would be like Green Beret, and I found or Good Twins and Far. Yes, ma'am. Mr. I said you can't have to use when it's going to a What you're going to want to use is canned heat, what we displayed earlier today. Any other questions? Concerns? No? Yes, sir. Is the story for the canned heat the same as the uh, kitchen for canned heat, yes, you're going to want to keep it in a dry place, not to where it's too hot either. But yes, it's safe, it is safe for storage. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, just to let you know, me and Andrea will be autographing our cookie books. <laughs> administration. So please feel free to go up to me or Marshall Gatsa or to Chief Gloria. We'll be handing out our business cards. If you have any concerns or questions, please feel free to reach out and, and ask us, okay? All right, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Deputy Chavez. Uh, can we mix MREs with egg for tacos in the morning? No, I, I'm just joking, I'm joking. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Um, uh, this critical information is very important. Um, again, being prepared, doing things now is what's very important and all the valuable information that we have here, please take it with you. Don't just throw it away. Please go through the information. It will really, really benefit you. So, well, there is one important segment that we want to um, uh, move on to right now. And uh, Andrea is going to be helping me here. Uh, we have something special for you tonight. Um, this is a goodie bag. And in this goodie bag, you can carry hot or cold items. All right? So you can, you can do either or. Um, Andrea is going to be showing us here. Um, these goodie bags uh, from the county judge office, and she will be helping us show you everything that we have here. And so remember that evaluation that we talked about? Okay, if you fill that evaluation and turn it in, uh, you will be given one of these goodie bags. And so 
Um, and as you'll be showing us here, the different items that we have. And so number one, we have uh, can openers, all right? So um, it is difficult to cook if you have no power without uh, without one of these. And so it is very important. And here on this little goodie bag, we have two nice can openers that you can use during situations in which you may not have power. Uh, Texas AgriLife Extension is providing us with this large uh, handy can opener. Uh, this double-sided punch uh, can opener is provided by Judge uh, Richard Cortez. So uh, this little one also uh, has a uh, magnet, and so please always keep it handy. You can put it on your fridge, and you'll have them there ready to go. Throw it on your on your go bag if you need to, you know. But always, you know, have it prepared. So that is on your uh, goodie bag. The second item that we have is a thermometer and this one is for the fridge remember we talked about how you only have up to about four hours you know once you lose power and so when the power goes out we need to keep the refrigerator door closed to prevent the cold temperature to keep the cold temperature Hidalgo County Emergency Management brings us this sturdy thermometer page four of your recipe book has a page dedicated to that topic in specific so don't forget to go back and, and read that information AgriLife has also provided this little magnet to remind you what safe temperature uh, should be on your on your on your um, uh, refrigerator. So you know, keep it handy. Put it in your refrigerator. Very very valuable information to keep your food healthy and good to go. The third item that we have on this goodie bag for you, a beautiful magnet with all the phone numbers for each precinct. All right, you have a lot of valuable information there. Thank you, Judge Cortez, uh, as this is being provided by him. Place it on your refrigerator as soon as you get home. So please don't lose it. You have valuable information. You can call for assistance or for more information, you know, if we end up having some kind of emergency. The fourth item that we have on this goodie bag, it's a notebook and a waterproof bag. All right. Remember, we should write down all important phone numbers and information. Why is that? Well, remember, we were just talking about right now, if, if you lose power shortly after, your devices, your, phone, your phones are going to die. And we're no longer in the times in which we used to memorize phone numbers, right? And so, you know, how long would it be before you're able to get access to, to all those phone numbers and to be able to contact important people or contact agencies that will provide you with, with assistance? And so this little notepad and um, a waterproof bag will help you. So take the time to start translating all of your em emergency contacts, all your important phone numbers onto this notepad so that you can have it good to go in the event that you lose power at your home and you're not able to charge your devices. So Idaho County, uh, George Office, thank you very much for providing uh, these valuable items. Now, uh, the fifth item that we have, it's, uh, well, don't forget to buy fresh vegetables, right? That's, that's one of the things that we were focusing on on the, on the first two recipes. So this is a nice brush that you can use to, you know, clean your vegetables, but it's also a vegetable peeler, right? So it serves two purposes. So this is another item that we have here. And um, uh, we uh, thank, thank you to AgriLife for providing this particular item. And finally, the sixth and final item that we have on the goodie bag is hand sanitizer. Again, we need to continue to remember to you know, wash our hands and when we're out and about, if we're not able to use soap and water, use a hand sanitizer you know, that is provided. And you know, we all need to make sure that we're safe and this hand sanitizer and little bag is courtesy of our city of McAllen. So uh, we thank, thank our major, uh, Mayor Villalobos and our city. And so remember, what do we need to do to get this nice goodie bag? Fill, fill our, our little evaluation, um, uh, our survey for today. And so let's keep that in mind. And so let's move on to that. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the final round of door prices. All right. So get your tickets ready. We have six more door prices. And so let's see what we're going to get. And okay. The next winner is 1857. 1857. And here we have a winner. All right. So, all right, let's go with one more. All right, so number 1866. 1866, going once. No name in the back either for our Facebook audience. So, 
1866 going twice and 1866 going thrice. Okay, so let's go to another one. Okay, let's get this one over here. 1841. What? Hey, there it is. We got one there. 1841. Congrats. Okay. No? You just got here? There we go. Okay, so let's mix it up. Let's flip them around, let's flip them around, flip them around. And let's see. The next number is better not be you. <laughs> 1868. 1868. No. No way. No way. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. 1868. There you go. Hmm. All right, one eight five zero. All right, find the house. All right, and we have two more, correct? One more, two more, two, one more. Oh, two more. All right, so one eight six four, one eight six four, right there. Okay, we have a winner. All right, so the final and grand prize, if you look back, there is a nice, nice, very nice cooler. And that prize is going to 1846. 1846. We have a winner. All right. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, Facebook audience, before we go, we want to thank Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez for bringing this cooking school to Precinct 2 and our city here in the city of McAllen. And of course, none of this will be possible without Texas A&M Extension Service, AgriLife Extension Service of Hidalgo County. So thank you very much for being here today and making this possible. But ladies and gentlemen, we also need to thank you for taking the time to be here, for taking the time to log in and watch us live on Facebook and learn about all these recipes that are not just healthy, but are recipes that are going to help you be ready and prepared in the event of an emergency. We've learned today that anything can happen at any time, and we need to be ready. We need to be contributors to a successful transition from an emergency to back to reality, back to being normal, back to being productive members of our society, productive members of our cities, of our county. And so we want to thank you for being here, taking the time to learn, taking the time to pay attention and to listen to us. Thank you so much. Um, have a great evening, and please drive safe going home. We appreciate you being, for being here. Thank you.